Dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lecture number three. In this lecture, we are going to analyze uh, the early repolarization pattern. And as you can see from the title, uh, there is a benign or malignant question mark, uh, because in the most recent years, the issue of uh, repolarization, early repolarization, has become uh, a very debated issue in the clinical science, uh, mostly related to the new uh, reports and observation derived from uh, clinical practice. And uh, I believe that um, a few historical remarks uh, may be useful to <coughs> fully understand uh, the clinical significance of the early repolarization pattern. Uh, the J-wave actually, which is the main issue of the today lectures uh, is also uh, the called the Osborne wave. The J wave was uh, J for injury, current of injury, which uh, the scientists at the Osborne described in uh, animal models uh, that were exposed to the hypothermic condition. And they developed uh, this kind of changes on the 12 lydic G and uh, just preceding the occurrence of the ventricular fibrillation. In uh, subsequent time, uh, however, early repolarization uh, has uh, changed the meaning in terms that for uh, several years, uh, early repolarization was considered uh, this pattern here, where substantially what is uh, the main feature is the ST segment elevation, which is followed by a positive T wave in uh, precordial leads. Uh, this particular pattern has been uh, um, described by Wassenburg and others uh, and has been described in uh, general population, including athletes, uh, and has been always considered a kind of uh, normal variant deprived of uh, clinical significance. At the same time, particularly starting from 1999, Gusaik, Danzelevich, and 2000, Kalla, and Tagachi, defined the early repolarization instead as a notch, elevated notch from the down-sloping limb of the QRS, which is followed by the ST segment elevation and T wave. The Contemporary definition of the early repolarization is uh, therefore not the ST segment elevation, but is the presence of J point elevation, which should be at least of 0.1 millivolt, uh, present in at least two leads, inferior on the lateral leads on 12 lead electrocardiogram. This is the current definition of the early repolarization pattern. And, uh, this definition becomes wide popular a few years ago when uh, Michelle Seguer published on New England Journal of Medicine this outstanding paper about sudden cardiac death associated with the early repolarization. Let's go into the data of this paper. Here you can see what uh, Michelle Seguer called as early repolarization. These are the precordial leads where you can see this kind of notches. And here again, these notches, which are the equivalent of J-wave I call you. Also, in the standard leads, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, down-sloping of the S-wave, which is uh, called the slurring of the S-wave. This pattern were the only electrocardiographic pattern that Michelle Seger actually was able to find in a selected population of people incurring ventricular fibrillation in the absence of any structural cardiovascular disease. And there is a clear differences in the clinical outcome and the re recurrences of ventricular fibrillation between patients showing this particular pattern called early repolarization from those patients showing no such a pattern. Um, obviously, this uh, 
uh, observation rise a lot of interest uh, and rise uh, a lot uh, was a trigger of a lot of uh, investigation and reports including athletes why including athletes because in athletes uh, there was uh, a literature showing that uh, this uh, j wave uh, the prominent j wave was uh, quite common in particular if i want to mention this uh, paper from rosso a few years ago here you can see that the young athletes uh, particularly male athletes uh, in comparison to the female which are red one so the male athletes uh, show a proportion of uh, j point elevation which was uh, much larger than in uh, control sedentary population and in between uh, those uh, and patient with uh, idiopathic ventricular fibrillation and uh, if you can see the distribution however distribution gives us some clues uh, for differentiation in fact uh, while in patient uh, with uh, idiopathic ventricular fibrillation uh, the J point elevation was present also in the lateral leads uh, in uh, uh, athletes uh, and the same extent in uh, uh, general population this uh, location was almost uh, not present there were also the reports uh, in athletes uh, I just want to mention the Riccardo Cappato paper on circulation a few years ago where Riccardo described actually the presence of prominent J wave in athletes who had incurred a cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death in a proportion larger than in normal athletes. <coughs> That's why we decided to start an investigation specifically focus on the issue of the J wave um, elevation and we were able to um, recruit uh, more than 700 elite athletes uh, which were evaluated in according to our protocol uh, just before their participation to Olympic Games or so World Championship <coughs> the population included a substantial proportion about 40 uh, percent of the female the um, age was uh, relatively young the mean age was 25 and the athletes were elite competitors engaged in uh, 30 different uh, sports uh, disciplines what we did uh, athletes were routinely uh, evaluated by 12 lead EKG exercise electrocardiogram and the imaging testing to confirm or exclude the presence of uh, structural cardiovascular disease uh, and all the athletes with uh, any kind of uh, supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmias either on 12 lead EKG or on an exercise testing they all underwent 24 hour alter monitoring which included a daily training session <coughs> and let's go directly to the results <coughs> of the 700 athletes 102 which is 14% uh, showed J-wave and or QRS slurring. The vast majority, 86, had uh, not this kind of pattern. The majority of the athletes uh, showing J-wave QRS slurring were engaged in uh, rowing, canoeing, uh, mid and long distance running, swimming, so mostly the endurance athletes. Uh, this is one clear example of what we call uh, J wave. And here you can see the precordial leads uh, before to be six, uh, where there is a ST segment elevation, a clear ST segment elevation with a clear prominent uh, J wave preceding ST segment elevation. This is, p is also evident in the standard leads, uh, particularly inferior leads, uh, where J wave is uh, clearly evident here. Another example, this is a cross country skier where please uh, consider here the J wave here and the slurring pattern here. 
The distribution of J-Wave aquaresces learning in uh, our athletes was mostly anterior, lateral and inferior, that is diffuse, in over 70% of the cases. In 25% of the cases were just in lateral leads and in the very thin minority of 3%, this J-Wave were present in the inferior leads. This location should be remarked because according to the Michelle Sager observation, the vast majority of the patients with uh, uh, primary ventricular fibrillation had J-wave pattern present in the inferior and the lateral leads, at the difference from our athletes. With regard to the ST segment elevation, ST segment uh, was uh, elevated in 84% of the athletes. In the overwhelming majority of the athletes, the J-wave was followed by ST segment elevation and with a terminal positive tall T-wave. In a very few minority, 16%, uh, there was no ST segment elevation, but of notice, uh, there was uh, no one single athlete with a descending or downsloping ST segment uh, segment. So this is an, again a remarkable difference from the Michelle Sager patients in which the majority of the patients with the ventricular fibrillation J-point elevation and also ST segment horizontal or descending. There were also certain characteristics that are, men are worthy to mention with regard to the electrocardiography pattern. The athletes showing uh, J-Wave also had uh, relatively lower heart rate, which in our population is also an uh, indirect evidence of intensive exercise conditioning. They also had a greater prevalence of Sokolov-Lyon criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy, 76% versus 31% which also in our population is an expression of a greater extent of left ventricular remodeling. And uh, as you can see, as I mentioned, the ST segment elevation was present in the overall majority of the athletes with the J-point elevation. And uh, with regard to the arrhythmias, we were surprised there were no significant arrhythmias in any one of the athletes, including the athletes with the J-point elevation. The J-point elevation are the green one. Here you can see that about 11% uh, had supraventricular arrhythmias, about 14% had ventricular arrhythmias, but none of the athletes had the non-sustained ventricular tachycardia or any other form of complex of ventricular arrhythmias. And with regard to the morphologic characteristics, here again there are certain differences. For instance, either left ventricular cavity dimension was larger, wall thickness on average was greater, and the mass was larger in athletes showing J-wave and QRS slurring. Again, as a direct evidence of a greater extent of left ventricular remodeling. So, if we want to summarize in one single picture the characteristic of the athletes with uh, J wave of QRS slurring, we can say that they had greater prevalence of left ventricular hypertrophy on the electrocardiogram by Sokolov Lion index. They had uh, ST segment elevation in the, the vast majority of the cases. They had a lower heart rate, they have increased left ventricular mass. All these features suggest a greater extent of left ventricular remodeling. But the most interesting, the most uh, compelling uh, finding was the clinical outcome. As you can see from the 102 athletes with uh, J-Wave QRS slurring, over a mean six-year follow-up period, which in selected cases was uh, most than 10 years and up to 18 years of follow-up, there were no cardiovascular events occurring, no symptoms and no evidence of cardiovascular disease on the imaging testing.
The same was true also for the other athletes, except that there were a car accident, incident atherosclerotic coronary artery disease in the athletes becoming older, systemic hypertension, and occasionally ablation for supraventricular tachycardia. So what is relevant from our observation is that the follow-up was not particularly prolonged. But, uh, however, during this six-year follow-up, uh, we were relatively reassured that uh, there were no events, uh, no symptoms occurring in these athletes. So, in other terms, uh, this uh, J-wave pattern in our athletes uh, seems uh, to be benign expression of uh, electrical remodeling of the atlas heart, another electrical expression of the atlas heart. What about uh, the follow-up? There were certain uh, changes that are worthy to be considered. For instance, uh, there were a number of uh, athletes in which uh, the J-wave pattern changed during the follow-up. I want to show this particular example. About one-third showed changes. Please uh, consider these athletes. This is a female runner that was examined here on the left panel at the peak training. At the peak training, she showed this uh, J wave here, clear evident, uh, and the slurring maybe here. Please consider that the heart rate was at 37 beats per minute. On the other end, we had uh, the opportunity to examine air again at uh, the low training after few months, uh, please consider the heart rate is still low but uh, larger, much increased in comparison to the peak training, so which is, this is a clear expression of low training, and please have a look here, there is uh, no evidence of J-wave. Another example on the opposite, this is an athlete, a rower, which, were, uh, which was examined at low training period, heart rate 68 bit per minute, the no evidence of J-wave, which is start to become evident here. The heart rate is 58. So from this experience, we had uh, the um, idea, uh, the concept, that uh, the J-wave is a dynamic in nature, and uh, that uh, is in athletes uh, is much more evident uh, during the period of the peak training in association with the reduced heart rate, increased the voltage, and all the other electrocardiographic changes uh, consistent uh, with the exercise training. And from this experience, uh, we now can try to derive some uh, useful criteria for differentiating J-wave in athletes, which has a benign significance from J-wave in patients with a primary fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, which has obviously a different clinical meaning. In uh, athletes, uh, the benign early repolarization is uh, usually diffuse, uh, distributed in anterior and the lateral leads. They have a relatively low amplitude, usually a couple, a millimeter of 0 0.2 millivolts, as you can see here. One of the most uh, typical features is uh, the ST segment, which is uh, always ascending with a positive and a peak T wave, and also associated with the low heart rate and increased SR wave voltages. We were able to observe changes over time in terms of that at the peak training, this uh, J-wave will become uh, more evident. Uh, with the detraining, the J-wave will uh, even disappear. And these electrocardiographic changes occur in the complete absence of symptoms, uh, of events, uh, and no family history for sudden cardiac death. On the other end, from the literature, we understand that uh, the malignant early repolarization is mostly present in the inferior and the lateral leads. They may have uh, amplitude of 2 millimeters or 0.2 point millivolt or even greater.
and particularly that there are dynamic marked changes of the J wave usually in the period preceding ventricular fibrillation. The ST segment is usually shown here, is uh, horizontal or descending. In uh, clinical practice, uh, those individuals are usually present clinically with the syncope, and the family history usually they have uh, sudden cardiac events. In conclusion, early repolarization pattern in trine and adults has a specific characteristic in terms of amplitude, distribution, dynamicity, association with ST segment elevation. Is not associated with the incidence of any symptoms or arrhythmias or adverse clinical events over a medium term follow up period. And therefore, the, the, the J wave uh, in athletes has a benign clinical significance, and no additional testing are required in case this is found in the electrocardiogram of the trained athletes. And this is the end of the lecture number three. Okay. <laughs>